And what do you make of these latest clusters, these large numbers of items, whatever they are seen in these satellite images? You think it could be the plane? You know, uh, Wolf, this is such a remote part of the ocean that seeing large uh, groups of objects like this, what could considered to be a, a a drifting um, pattern of aircraft parts. I think it's very encouraging to see these objects close together. The simulations that we were just discussing there that my colleague Van Gurley is doing predicted that the debris would stay fairly close together, clumped together as it drifted around. So this is consistent with the models, and I'm very encouraged by the recent information. Well, let me bring Eric in, because you know the Indian Ocean well. Eric, uh, if this plane crashed, let's say after 19 days, and there's debris from the plane, wreckage from the plane. You know the waters, you know the currents, you know the weather. Would they all be generally in the same area, presumably, or would they be spread out over 19 days over a wide range of the Indian Ocean? Well, I think, I think what you would see is that there's clumps of debris, just as what we're seeing now. So I also think this is an encouraging sign. You would see that um, there's parts, there's debris fields that move away, but within these debris fields that might be a few miles in diameter, you would see much higher uh, concentrations of debris, yes. So if they identify this debris as being from the, the plane wreckage, Colleen, uh, presumably it could be hundreds of miles away from the seabed where the actual plane, if the plane is on the bottom of the water, is actually located. Well, we're predicting, I think we said that um, the currents are taking the debris about a mile an hour or 24 miles a day. So looking at the amount of days, we're, we're talking several hundred miles of travel. So if you back the debris field up to its potential point of impact, that's where we should be looking. And yes, the uh, beacons are going to be several miles down on the floor. When we deploy the toad pinger locators, the the things that will detect the black box beacons, we put them down as close to the seafloor as we can so that they're, they get the best shot at hearing the signal. Assuming that signal is still beeping something uh, because we're concerned about the right. batteries uh, right now. We'll have more on that later coming up uh, here in the Situation Room. But Eric, you've described the currents in the Indian Ocean. In your words, a mini hurricane. These are like mini hurricanes. You say, uh, explain what you mean. Well, what I mean is that they're vortices and that they move around. And just like hurricanes, if you see them on satellite images, they have these giant eyes and they move around. So are these, um, so are the eddies, what, they, what we call them in the ocean. And they're not nearly as violent and they're not nearly as damaging as hurricanes themselves. But they have the same physics, the same physical properties. It's the same underlying mathematics of these hurricanes and the smaller eddies. And with the uh, fall and winter approaching uh, in that part of the world, the weather is only going to get worse.